welcome to Graceful Healing, a podcast to get straight talk about healing and living again. My name is Maureen Lake. I'm a holistic health coach, speaker, author, and thyroid disease fighter. Each week, I'll be bringing you graceful conversations to inspire you to seek new ways to hit the reset button to catapult your health and vitality to new levels. Listen in and open your heart to all the new possibilities. Are you ready? Let's do this. Today, I'm happy to bring you Rebecca Storm. Rebecca has an important message to share with you about fighting and coming out a winner. Her ability to transform her life from one of abuse to love is inspiring and oh so powerful. She's now a confidence coach. When we were talking, she mentioned that, quote, confidence is a practice, not a personality trait, unquote. I just love that. Wise beyond her years is Rebecca. I thought a lot about my daughter during our conversation, and I can't wait for you to hear Rebecca's message of hope. Let's do this. Oh, welcome, everybody. I can't wait for you to meet Rebecca. She's a copywriter and body confidence coach, and she helps perfectionists find peace of mind, overcome comparison, and enjoy life beyond their body. She has an amazing five-star podcast called The Body Confidence, and one of the things that I love is her idea that she has that confidence is a practice, not a personality trait. So I can't wait for you to meet Rebecca, and I can't wait to hear how you came about that one statement that it's a practice and not a personality trait. So welcome, Rebecca. We're excited to hear your story and your journey about where you landed where you are today. Thank you, Maureen. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. So can you share us a little bit about your story and the journey that helped create where you are today? Because I know you have an amazing coaching practice. It sounds like it's really worldwide. Like you, Yes. Amazing. Can't wait to hear it. Yeah. So my story really started after I graduated from college. And for a long time, I really thought that my confidence was part of my personality. I never really second guessed it because it had just always been there. But when I was in college, I got into a relationship that turned out to be a pretty toxic one. And throughout that process, I really became a different person. There's something that happens especially to women, and I guess to men too, when you are in a relationship with someone who tries to pull out the worst in you and tries to convince you that you are less than you really are to make them feel superior. Mm -hmm. So that's really, I went through about a year of that before leaving that relationship. And after that, I, I really became a different person. I didn't have my confidence anymore. I second-guessed everything I was thinking and feeling. I always questioned whether or not how I was feeling was valid or if I was it was even okay to think or feel the way that I did. Hmm. And I would compare myself to other women constantly and just always worry, you know, if I looked good enough or if I needed to, you know, wear different clothes to to look better or what whatever it was. It was just this all-consuming presence in my mind of Rebecca, you are not enough and you need to try your absolute hardest to convince people that you are worth their time, basically. Yeah. And And I kind of reached this point where I was looking in the mirror and I was just kind of like, what happened to you? Like, Mm -hmm. this is not who you have been. You have not been this way your entire life. So what happened? And I really realized the weight of, of everything that I went through had impact my personality. I didn't even realize that you know, my personality could change after, after being in a relationship for, it was about eight months. It wasn't even that long. But I realized just how deep that change went. And I knew that I didn't want to feel this way for the rest of my life. So I started looking back and reflecting on exactly how things started to change and why. And I realized that I started believing all of these things that that he told me about you know, that I was insecure or that I wasn't as smart as I thought I was and all these terrible Mm. things that some people feel that they need to tell others in order to feel good about themselves. Right. 
which is really sad, you know. So I started believing all of those things. And then that changed my whole perspective on myself. So I thought, okay, if I can change those beliefs again, maybe I can get back to who I was before. I just need to kind of look at those beliefs and figure out what's going on to really change that. And so I did that. And I went through this process of self healing and reflection for about a year. I didn't, I didn't get into a new relationship. I didn't do anything else because I knew I was so broken that I had to put myself back together before mm-hmm. I would be available emotionally for anyone else. Wow. So after all of that, I started putting myself out there and, and it was horrible. <laughs> the, the dating was terrible and I was sad all the time. But, you know, I just kept telling myself it will get better. Like it will get better. This is part of the process and nothing worth having ever comes easily. So if you want this healing to be this permanent thing, it you can't take shortcuts. You can't do the things that make you feel good right now you need to do this long term. So eventually, I started speaking up for myself more as far as what I really wanted in a relationship and what I was going to accept and what I was not going to accept. And it worked. (laughs) It's like this crazy thing. When you ask for what you want, you get it Mm -hmm. eventually. And so I met, well, I didn't meet, I I, um, reconnected with a guy I knew in high school, actually. And we started dating and now we are engaged. And it's like this crazy story that he wanted to date me in high school, but (laughs) I was just kind of like, no, I don't think so. Like, we don't really have a lot in common. I don't know. I don't really Mm -hmm. get you. And then we kind of both came full circle and now, now we're together. And so through that process, I, I didn't really think that that was a very significant thing. I was like, yeah, well, I, I was in this bad relationship and then I got out and, and now I'm fine. But I realized just how impactful that was on my life mm-hmm. and how broken I felt at the time and how badly I don't want any other women to feel that way or to feel like that's the way it is now. Mm-hmm. Because on the outside, I was successful. I moved to Minneapolis and I had a job downtown. I was making great money. I was you know, living the corporate life and whatever. But inside, I was crushed and I was so insecure and I felt like I couldn't even talk about it because on the outside, I was successful. So I felt like guilty that, you know, who am I to feel insecure or or like I'm not good enough when I have this great job and I'm living Mm -hmm. in this great city and I'm doing all these great things. Right. So I wanted to have a place for women like me who felt like they couldn't talk about their insecurities because, you know, people do say that I'm beautiful and people do say that I'm successful, but I couldn't hear that because I didn't believe it. Mm Mm-hmm. So now I help women to to work through that and to build that emotional resilience to believe that they are good enough and that the way they look is the least interesting thing about them. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. That really is. And to think that like it being in a relationship for eight months, it must have felt like eight years for when you reflect yeah. back how horrible it must have been for you, that that could have such devastating impact on your self-confidence. It's, yeah, And then to think where you are now is just amazing and that you coach other women to help them overcome their, I mean, how many people or women out there feel a lack of whatever? It doesn't really matter what it is. I know so many people that just don't feel good about themselves in so many ways and mm-hmm. why we do that to ourselves, I'll never know. But the fact that there's someone like you that they can connect with to help them overcome those insecurities is really amazing. It really is. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. That's so as far as like, because now I'm super intrigued, like your journey of healing, what are some of the things that you did? So I've always and I think this comes down to that I did have this, I have this fighter in me, you know, I, I believe that I can do more than even I think that I can sometimes. So I really wanted to challenge myself because I knew that this was a big deal. And so in order to do this type of healing, you do have to have that little bit of fighter in you to say, I'm not settling for feeling this way anymore. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I started with that mindset of like, this is not what I want for my life. And I'm willing to make it a little bit worse before it gets better. If that is how it has to go, then that's how it has to go. Because what I did was instead of pushing away the negative thoughts or pushing away the memories of of that toxicity in that relationship, instead of pushing that down and ignoring it and trying to push through it, I examined it Hmm. and I sat with it and I looked at it and I allowed myself to dissolve that negative energy around it. Mm -hmm. So for example, if there is a person or a, a movie or a song or something that reminds you of a time or a place, whatever, it makes you sad or it makes you jealous or it makes you it just stirs up these angry feelings in you. I would sit and I would listen to that song and I would watch that movie until it didn't have power over me anymore. And so it hurt and it was bad when I was, you know, because there are songs, you know, when you're in a relationship, there are songs you start listening to together or there is a movie you went to one time or there's a place or a, a restaurant, you know, like everybody mm-hmm. has these these trigger points really. And instead of trying to go through my life, avoiding those triggers that would send me back into that place of feeling like I wasn't good enough, I just, I sat with them and I looked at them until they didn't trigger me anymore because I realized this is just a song. Like this song is not owned by him. Mm -hmm. This is not owned by those emotions. I can recreate my experience with this thing right now so that when I think about it, Later, I can think about this experience Mm -hmm. instead of the negative one. So for a lot of women, they feel self-conscious. You know, uh, the main one is, you know, putting on a bikini, going to the beach, something like that. And what you can do is you put on your swimsuit, you know, in your home, in your bedroom, whatever. And you just hang out by yourself in your swimsuit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you just kind of let it be like, wow, this is what I was afraid of. Like, this is a piece of fabric on my body. And like, it's not that scary. Mm -hmm. And you can work towards building up to be going in public or whatever. But I do want to also mention that there's no, you know, there's no rule that says you have to wear a certain article of clothing to the beach. So if you don't feel comfortable, and you just don't want to wear a bikini all the time or a swimsuit or whatever, that's fine. But it's about making yourself comfortable and not worrying about what other people think. Mm -hmm prioritizing your comfort over the comfort of others. So that's one thing that I did was just kind of instead of try to avoid my triggers, I just faced them because I knew that they would come up. I knew that they would. So it's kind of unrealistic to try to avoid them your whole life. Right. So I just was like, I'm putting, I'm giving this thing too much power over me. Like I'm letting it, if someone mentions this song or this city or this you know, whatever it is, I'm like, I get triggered and I go back into that mindset. I'm like, I don't want that to have power over me anymore. Mm -hmm. So I faced it until it didn't have power over me. That's huge because so many people would just assume, well, with time, I'll forget kind of thing. But yeah, you just hit it straight on and kind of mourned it in a way. Yep. Yep. That's just such a powerful way of looking at things. It really is. Yeah. Well, and and I was very mindful to be kind to myself during that process. You know, it's some people might think of that and be like, oh, well, you're just intentionally, you know, hurting yourself to get through this. And it's like, well, it's not that it's not like this is hurting me. So I'm just going to put myself through it. It's it's a kindness like that. Okay, this is hurting right now. Why is it hurting? Let yourself hurt. Let yourself do what you need to do to get through it Mm -hmm. until this doesn't bother you anymore. Because I think that there's this, this energy around it that needs to be released. Right. And if we push it down and we say, it'll get better with time, you know, whatever. Well, I don't think it will. And a lot of times people have this pent up resentment towards people, places, things, and they don't even, they don't even really know why anymore. Exactly. But if they, yeah, if they sit and think about it, then they get, they, that energy comes back. And so I would just say, you know, if people think that suppressing things works, like, how is it working so far? Yeah, exactly. You know, like, <laughs> it, is that really working? Right. Like, I don't think so. Like, that has never worked for me. So yeah, I just figured I don't want it to have this, this power over me anymore. So I took it back. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, because I agree. So many people suppress things. And then three years later, they find out they 
have a leaky gut or, you know, something, Mm -hmm. whatever it might be, even health wise, that Mm -hmm. the trigger point really was an experience that they had that they'd never dealt with. It's powerful, that mind over body, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. So I love that. I love how you just were able to work through and change your mindset. And that's crazy, but I know it works. So Mm -hmm. congratulations to you. And the fact that you're able to find love again, too, because after coming out of an abusive relationship, that doesn't necessarily the happy ending that a lot of women have. So No, it's not. And I think a big reason why is because they don't allow themselves to really feel that hurt. You know, they want to pretend like it didn't happen or they want to like they and I'm not going to lie. When I got out, I was like, I'm never I'm never dating anyone ever again because I'm not going to it's not worth it. I'm like, it's not worth it to open myself up to this type of just terrible treatment. Like I care about myself too much to ever put myself in a position where that could happen again. Mm -hmm. And that's a very normal response right after the trauma. But as the dust settled and I like, I knew that I wanted to have a relationship again. I'm a very, I'm a very loving person. And that's why when that happened, like it was so hurtful because I gave everything that I had to this person and it was just like destroyed and, and tainted and ruined. And so I knew that I wanted a relationship again, and that was a big motivator for why I I took the time to reflect on all of this because I was like, if I get in a relationship right now, I don't even know what's going to happen. Like, it's mm-hmm. going to be bad because because I can't I can't even take care of myself emotionally. So like, I'm not going to dump all of my baggage onto some other person before I deal with my stuff. Mm -hmm. So because that's how women get into the cycle of the same bad relationship over and over. Right. Because whatever energy you have within you, you're putting that out into the world. And if you have that negative kind of hurt energy, like what kind of person is going to want to pick up on that? Well, it's either someone who's also hurting or someone who is going to hurt you again. Right. You know? Yeah. So I really focused on that because I wanted to be whole again before going out there. And a really big part of how I was able to attract the right person was building my confidence to say exactly what I wanted, exactly how I expected to be treated, setting proper boundaries early in the relationship. Like it was very intentional it was very uncomfortable at times to to say, hey, I'm not okay with that. And mm-hmm. if you want to do that, that's fine. But then we can't be together. You know, like mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like, you know, these are my boundaries. And if you want to respect them, great. And if you don't, then I need to move on. And a lot of women have a hard time reconciling with that idea of like, really, yeah, you can say this is not working for me and I'm I'm moving on before it's like bad. Right. You know, you do that in the beginning and then it doesn't hurt as much, even if you do move on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, you sound like an amazingly strong woman, (laughs) you know, from what it is, it's incredible. So tell tell us what you do now and who you, who you work with. And I know that your coaching business, you're reaching, like I said earlier, women really around the world. It's just amazing. So I'd love for you to share what you do and how you do it. Yeah. So I mainly coach with women who have that same story where they're successful and they have the good job. They have everything on the outside that they were told they need, but yet inside they're still dealing with these feelings of not feeling good enough, feeling insecure, wondering if if there's really more than what they have right now. And that feeling of kind of hopelessness because that's where I was. And that's how I'm, that's what I know I can fix and I can work with. So what we do is I have one-on-one coaching, which is my high-end coaching for four months. And I also have a program because I know not everyone can commit to that Mm one-on-one program. So I have an online program as well that's called Confidently She. And, but my one-on-one, we meet once a month for video calls. That's how I can meet women around the world. We do a session through video call and we just really talk about what's going on. And I think the main, the main reason why it's so powerful is because I can create a space for them to be honest 
about everything that they're thinking, everything they're feeling without any form of judgment on my end, because I've been there. I've had every terrible thought about myself. I've had every terrible feeling and I've felt like I can't feel that way too. So I, I really can resonate and understand with how these women are feeling. And then we just figure out, okay, so what is the thing that you need to face? What's the thing you need to work through in order to get your energy back? Because it's really about allowing all their energy to go to these negative places instead of, instead of realizing that they have the power to take it back mm -hmm. and to just think about other things and to also not put morality on the thoughts that they have. So if you are being critical, that doesn't mean you're bad and it needs to stop. It's just know that you have the power to say, okay, these are the thoughts I'm thinking right now. And, you know, that's, that's not really what I want to be thinking. So instead of beating myself up over it or, or, and making myself feel worse or forcing myself to change my thoughts, like, let's just, okay, like, what do I want to be feeling instead? And how can I do that? Do I need to get off my phone and go outside? Do I need to, you know, get out of my sweatpants and put on some nice clothes? Do I need to just take a shower and reset a little bit? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like just figuring out different ways to work through that. But then the, the main thing is the Voxer support. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. App. Yeah. So it's basically like having a best friend in your pocket who knows exactly how to help you through these feelings. Because, I mean, I wish everyone had a best friend who could give really great advice, but not everyone does give good advice. And it's and hard so, to find good friends these days. It is. Yeah. It is. Because so many people have their own stuff that they're projecting onto you. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's not always helpful. And so that's the challenge. So, it's yeah, it's like having a best friend in your pocket who can give you good advice, who has your back, who supports you without being jealous, you know? And so it's that I have offer unlimited boxer support to my one-on-one -on -one clients because I know that these things, they sneak up on you. And it's kind of like a, you know, a basketball coach doesn't coach the players and then say, okay, good luck at the game. Yeah. Like, <laughs> right. Like they change the plays and they, they change things up as the game is happening. Mm -hmm. And so that's why like the biggest part of the coaching is that boxer support. So, and if your listeners aren't familiar, it's like a voicemail app and like a messaging instant messaging app. So mm -hmm. you can do voice messages and text in the moment. So. That's incredible. So even no matter what day or time, time zone around the world, they can still contact you. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wow. So do I'm just curious, do you have many like older women or is it mainly younger women or no age? It's kind of a range. It's kind of a range. It depends on where, where they're at and really how long they've been dealing with this because usually it's been it's been years and the the stuff is packed really deep down and I think that my my message resonates with women between probably late 20s to mid 40s okay 50s. yeah it's a pretty big range because it just depends on you know how long have you been been feeling this way mm -hmm. you know it's not really an age thing it's an experience thing and I can imagine there's some women that have been in such long-term relationships, like even for decades, that are now just kind of coming into their own and realizing what a mess they've been living in. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have someone that's been through it and then have the tool, like with the Voxer tool, I mean, like that's just incredible. That's, you're actually the first coach that I've heard that uses that at anyone's doesn't matter what the time of day is or anything like that, like without parameters. I just, that's intriguing to me. And I just think that that would attract a lot of people because you never know when you might need well, somebody, right. right? Well, exactly. And I love what I, and I love what I do. Like I love it and I want to help. Mm -hmm. So it's not like an inconvenience if I get a message at 10 o'clock at night because my client is halfway around the world and, you know, she just, eat dinner and she's feeling, you know, feeling guilty. And, you know, it's like, I'll talk with her about that and mm -hmm. help reframe so that, you know, the rest of her day isn't ruined or night or whatever. And that's one reason why I don't, I don't want to put parameters around it because first of all, my clients respect my time. So I know they're not going to abuse it, right. but I, I really care and I really want to help. And I know 
what it feels like to be in that moment when everything is taking over you and you're like, I don't know what to do. Right. So if I would have had someone to be able to, to talk with in those moments, like that would have been a life changing thing for me. Mm-hmm. So that's what I want to give to my clients. That's wonderful. And then you said you also have a group program. Yes. So it's an online program where there are video modules that you work through. And then I have a Facebook group that goes along with it. So everyone in the program can connect. I think it's really powerful when women see that there are other women going through this. Mm -hmm. Like you are not alone. There's like everybody is going through this basically. But yet we tell ourselves that, you know, nobody else has this problem. So that group program is more of a self-guided program. But in the Facebook group, I do have regular trainings that I do in there as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. And just so listeners will know, I'll have all this information in the show notes on how best to contact Rebecca in case you want to go with her. She sounds amazing to me. So now this is kind of cheesy, but it's one question that I ask everybody who's been a guest on my show. So here it goes. What's one sentence of advice that you'd tell your younger self if you could go back in time? I would tell myself that you're allowed to feel insecure and you shouldn't minimize your struggles because you think other people have it worse. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. I really appreciate the time you spent with us. And like I said, I'll have all your information in the show notes and a lot more information about Rebecca and her program as a confidence coach. It's an amazing thing that you're doing. (laughs) Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to be here with you and talk with you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you so much for joining me today. This episode is brought to you by my book, The Graceful Advocate taking control of your life after a diagnosis of thyroid disease. You can find it currently on Amazon. I love it because my friends call it a purse book. They keep it with them when they go to the pharmacy, grocery store, or even to the doctor's office. It's a great little guide to keep you on track and informed. I can't wait for next week when I get to see you back on the pod. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate you so much. If you ever need someone to chat with about your healing journey, don't ever hesitate to reach out to me through my website at maureenlake.com.